go ahead and go. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. This is our uh, work session for the city of Starkville in preparation for our meeting of April the 7th, which will be Tuesday, next Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. And just as a disclaimer, this is going to be the first time that we have had um, attendance via telephone or by computer from everyone. So we're doing a yeah. Google Meets um, work session meeting today. So uh, while it may be a little bit awkward, I think everybody is in line with the social distancing and we're going to try to make this work as seamlessly as possible. So if everyone will uh, pay, have patience with us, we've got our wonderful IT people who are taking care of us. And so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, the, the work session doesn't require a quorum, but I wanna make sure we know who, every, who, who all is here. So I'm going to have set a little bit of protocol for us this morning. So what I want to do is um, kind of get a, uh, a roll call, if you will. So um, Ward 1, is Mr. Carver on the phone? No? Okay. Alderman Sistrunk, are you here, Ward 2? Sorry, Carver's here. I'm sorry? Carver's here. Oh, Ben, you're there. I'm sorry. I apologize. Alderman Carver is there. Okay. Uh, Alderman Sistrunk hasn't checked in with, with us. Um, Alderman Little, you're there. I'm here. Okay. Alderman Walker, are you there? I'm here. Okay. And Alderman Beatty, are you there? I'm on the line, yes. Okay. Thank you. Well, I know Alderman Vaughn has told me he will not be here, and I believe Alderman um, uh, Vice Mayor Perkins is not going to be here either. So that should be, with the exception of Sandra, who I feel sure will be checking in here shortly, um, that will be our, our group today. And then we've got department heads who are also in attendance for Google Meets as well. So um, we, will, we will see how this goes for us. So what I wanted to do is, uh, I know, you know CBS News kind of gives us the uh, night, your world in 90 seconds. So I just wanted to give everybody an update based on what we know uh, about today that we have heard from, from the emergency management folks. So as of today, Octobaha County has 23 reported cases of COVID-19. Mississippi has 1,358 reported cases and Mississippi has 29 reported deaths. So that is the status as it relates to what has uh, been put out as of this morning by, by the Mississippi Department of Health and the emergency management folks. So as we proceed through this, what I wanna do, what we normally do is have a presentation of some kind um, of what might or might not be going on with the board um, and with projects that we've got. But given the nature of the meeting and the difficulties that we are right now faced with, the challenges that we're faced with, what I wanted to do is go over the um, protocols and the, and the things that we have with the governor's order and how we're handling that. So um, I, and also in order not for us to, to talk over one another, I wanted to kind of establish some meeting protocol so that we make sure that everybody gets heard and that everybody has an opportunity to say you know, what they want to say without, without talking over one another. So I'm going to do a little bit of um, reading of the executive orders and try to give a, a sense of it and a distillation of it if I can. Um, I've gotten so I now travel around with uh, the uh, executive order number 1463, which the governor put out on the 24th, and then the executive order 1466, which he put out on April the 1st. And then the CISA um, instructions from the um, uh, emergency management folks, the Homeland Security folks, so that I can answer questions. But in the meantime, um, I want to see if, the, if we can make sure that the board members, uh, I'm going to call on you if this works. What am I hearing? Alderman Sistrunk is on the phone now. Alderman are you up? Alderman Sistrunk, you there? No, okay. Um, what I want to do is... It does show her present? Okay. Uh, what I want to do is, is call on everybody so that if you would, I'll, I'll go by, I'll go around by those who, who are there with us or here with us and um, let you, you know, say whatever it is you want to say about the issues that we're, that we're facing and that we're discussing. But if you would, when you're done, if you would say, you know, I'm, I'm finished, I uh, yield the floor, um, you know, that's all folks, or you know, whatever you want to say to let us know that we, and we'll go to the next person. It's just, I just don't want us to end up being a, a talk show where we're all talking on top of one another and nobody gets heard. So um, what I wanted to do as it relates to that is um, I'll go through real quickly um, 
because they're actually fairly long. The governor's first executive order is 1463. And in it, the most important piece of that is where he defines what is an essential business. And so um, pretty quickly, I'm just going to highlight those because I've had a lot of questions. We've had a lot of phone calls. I know everybody's had a lot of phone calls, um, emails, messages, you know, texts, that sort of thing about what, you know, is my business an essential business? So um, basically, the, the essential businesses are able to function at such a level as necessary to provide such essential services or functions and shall not be subject to any 10 person gathering limit or any other limitation or restriction inconsistent with his executive order. And now we've got our uh, legal person on the line here. So if I misstate something, I feel sure uh, Mr. Latimer will be able to correct me. But basically essential businesses are allowed to operate. They are, uh, it is recommended that they oversee and make sure that they keep six foot of distance between their personnel and between their uh, customers that are inside the store. They are not bound by the rule of 10, which is no more than 10 in a single space. So from that, um, when, you, when you are part of an essential business, if there are 50 employees in the building, that is not, that is not in violation of the governor's order as I read that. Chris, would you just give me a yay or a nay on that? I think that's correct, Mayor. Okay, thank you. All right, um, let, me, let me read through this again. I'm reading through, which by the way, the governor's orders and the frequently asked questions are up on the city's website. So this is executive order number 1463. And essential business means an essential government function, which would be why we are able to be here and why we are able to meet and why the city is able to continue to work to provide services to our, to our residents and to our citizens. And that includes public safety, first responders, law enforcement, fire prevention, courts and court personnel, military, emergency management personnel, corrections, probation and parole, child protection, child welfare, uh, EMTs, 911 call center employees, and workers and vendors that support law enforcement and emergency operations. So uh, the next on the list is essential health care, which includes assisted living facilities, elder care, hospitals, obviously. The next one is essential infrastructure, which is communications and sales. It's dams, aviation, airports, ports, roads and highways, transit, automotive sales and service, vehicle rental and service, taxi and network. I had a, a taxi service call me and ask me if they were essential. And under this they are, which includes Uber and Lyft. Uh, next is manufacturing. Manufacturing is considered essential. Any number of manufacturers, you've got healthcare, energy, steel and steel products fuel and petroleum exploration. All of those things are considered. So manufacturing is considered an essential <coughs> service. Agriculture and farms, we've got food cultivation, livestock, cattle, poultry, seafood operations. Uh, I had a flower shop call me the other day and it falls under horticulture. So you've got horticulture as part of agriculture, pesticides, herbicides, that would be the co-op as well. So those are essential services. Under essential retail, we've got supermarkets, food and beverage stores, food providers, convenience stores, pharmacy, hardware, building materials, gas stations. All those are considered essential retail. Essential services are trash collection, mail and shipping services, home repair, automotive sales and repair, warehouse, distribution, fulfillment centers, laundromats and laundry services. I've had calls from construction workers who have said, "Is this? am I a part of an essential business? And, and the answer is yes, you are. Uh, media is also included, and if anybody's interested, we have two media here, and they are appropriately distanced, six feet apart, so the media is included in that. Financial services, which would be banks and related financial institutions, payroll accounting, processing financial transactions, and services related to financial markets. Professional services include legal services, accounting services, insurance, and real estate. That calls about real estate. That includes appraisal and title work. Providers of basic necessities to economically disadvantaged populations, which is going to be businesses, religious and secular nonprofit organizations, food banks, I've had calls about food banks, foster care, home shelters, and care facilities. Um, construction and construction related services, again, building construction, lumber, janitorial and cleaning, all of those are considered essential services under the governor's order. Essential services needed to maintain safety, sanitation, and essential operation of residences, essential businesses, and essential business operations. Again, that goes back to law enforcement, fire prevention and response, firearm and ammunition manufacturers and retailers, 
building code enforcement, security, emergency management and response, building cleaning, including disinfection, automotive sales and repair. Uh, the defense industry is also included for employers and personnel who support the defense industry. Vendors that provide essential services or products including logistics and technology, child care programs and services, medical waste disposal, hazardous waste disposal, services needed to include uh, continuing operation of an essential business or service. Religious entities, including religious and faith-based facilities, um, but they also have to adhere to the CDC guidelines, which is the six feet and the ten, and the rule of ten, which is no more than ten in a single space. I've had a call from a pastor who wanted to have a, a service where cars came in and everybody stayed in their car, but he delivered his his uh, Palm Sunday service via the radio. So that, by the definition, would be something you could do because everyone is in a single and isolated space and they could do that. Uh, so that pretty well covers the items that are, that are listed in the executive order of 1463. Again, it was out on the 24th of this month and it is up on the city's website and there have been multiple social media sites that have, that have uh, transmitted that as well. So for reference purposes, you can go to the state website under uh, the governor's uh, executive orders it'll pop up it, and you can also go to the city's website, the emergency management websites, all of those are carrying those executive orders. The most Mayor. Important. Yes, sir. Mr. Uh, you may have skipped the education paragraph of the central business, so I didn't know if you wanted to read that one as well. Okay, let me go back and, and look at that. I apologize. Um, let's see, I did. I didn't, I didn't use my hot pink highlighter to, to highlight education, I'm sorry. Education including educators supporting public and private K-12 schools, colleges and universities, educational institutions for purposes of facilitating, facilitating distance learning and performing critical research and other essential functions including public school preparing and transporting free and reduced meals to eligible students within their districts. And that is something that our school system has been doing. Um, we've had a number of services that have been transporting meals. In fact, while I'm, while I'm on it, let me go ahead and say that the city has a hotline. It's 3262-323. Uh, 4813 and we are manning that Monday through Friday 9 to 4 city personnel are manning that and then the names you know, we'll take your name your phone number your address and your need and uh, those needs at the end of the day will be passed along to one of the churches they're rotating through um, various churches in the community who are willing and going to be able to take those requests and then go meet them and they'll be in contact with the people who have left us their name and number contact information. So again, that's going to be Monday through Friday, um, 9 to 4, and it's 323-4813. All right, and I will move on quickly so I don't take up all our time to the Executive Order 1466. That's the most recent one, and that's the one I'm going to let Mr. Latimer weigh in on because he studied it and apparently had some uh, hand in helping craft it. And so from his perspective, the, the governor's order is a shelter in place order and it is in essence a 24 seven curfew, if you will. Um, and it is uh, simply put, it is your decision tree of, am I, am, before you pick up the keys to your car, let's do it that way. Before you pick up the keys to your car, uh, are you going out for an essential purpose to an essential business? And if the answer is yes, then pick up your keys, go do what you need to do, and come back home. So if you are employed by an essential business, then that is an essential purpose. If you're going to get groceries, then that would be an essential purpose. So Mr. Latimer, you wanna, you wanna give us a little roundup on that? Give me a thumbs up? Sure, absolutely. absolutely. I think you summarized it very well, which is the order says stay at home unless you qualify for these exempted categories. And there are three broad exempted categories that allow you to travel and that is travel to an essential business or operation that is to perform an essential activity as those items are listed in the order or other types of specifically listed essential travel in the order and we can go through those one by one mayor or you can if you want to but those are the three broad categories that travel is allowed for otherwise the order clearly says that individuals are to stay home okay well i was going to go through them again i've got my highlighted pink um, particular items so um, and what I will do is read that uh, it is a, a shelter in place it, the duration is effective from 5 p.m. on Friday today 5 p.m. today 
and shall remain in full force and effect until 8 a.m. on Monday, April the 20th, unless rescinded or modified or extended. So I'm sure the governor will be addressing that more than likely before Monday at 8 a.m. Um, but in, in case he does, that is the date of the expiration and the time of the expiration. And shelter in place uh, basically says individuals currently living in the state of Mississippi are ordered to stay at home or in their place of residence except as allowed by this executive order. Um, for individuals whose residences are unsafe or become unsafe, for example, for domestic violence, they may and are encouraged to seek alternate locations. Local law enforcement and other officials shall assist such individuals to secure alternate locations. Another element is individuals using outdoor space when outside their homes or residences at all times shall maintain social distancing of a minimum of six feet between each individual and shall avoid gatherings in groups of more than 10 people. For purposes of this executive order, the terms home and residence include single family homes, hotels, rental units, shelters, mobile home parks, and similar facilities used as a principal dwelling. Um, for this purpose, evictions are also suspended. Evictions within the state of Mississippi are suspended, and all state, county, and local law enforcement officers are directed to cease enforcement of orders or evictions for residential premises under this or during the shelter-in-place order. No provision contained within this executive order shall be construed as relieving any individual of the obligation to pay rent or to make mortgage payments or to comply with any other obligation that an individual may have under tenancy or mortgage, but it does say that evictions will be stayed. So for those of you who are in an apartment, um, evictions are not going to be able to be uh, executed during this time, which will be till from five o'clock today until eight o'clock on the 20th. All non-essential business and operations cease, except for essential business or operations identified in executive order number 1463, which is why this one is so important because it refers, it is referred back to in this stage, this shelter in place order. Minimum operations or activities necessary for the business or operation to maintain the condition of facilities, premises and equipment, value of business inventory, payroll, employee benefits, security, and to facilitate employees of the business or operation to continue to work remotely from residences. Essential business or operations remain open. They are identified, again, in Executive Order 1463. They may remain open and shall operate at such level as necessary to provide essential services and functions. Uh, it says, for clarity, essential health care operations identified in that same 1463 order shall be construed broadly to avoid impact or interruption of the delivery of essential health care, but does not include fitness and exercise gyms, dance studios, clubs, tattoo parlors, spas, salons, barbershops, or other seminal, similar personal care or grooming facilities. So that is also a, a question that I've had addressed a number of times. You know, is my, is my hair care salon able to be open? And the answer is no under this executive order. Restaurants and bars may, may remain open but are limited to drive through curbside, and or delivery. All the ones in Starkville should already be doing that and have implemented it around town. Okay, prohibitive acti activities. All public and private social and other non-essential gatherings in groups of more than 10 people in a single space at the same time where individuals are in close proximity, less than six feet to each other shall be canceled or rescheduled. All places of amusement and recreation, whether indoors or outdoors, including but not limited to amusement parks and rides, museums, playgrounds, children's party and play facilities, all parks, including beaches, lakes, and reservoirs, not including walking trails, movie theaters, bowling alleys, and social clubs shall be closed to the public. So we have walking trails around Starkville. I see people walking by themselves uh, on our Lynn Lane walk, biking. Uh, multi-use path. Um, I see people walking in the streets, on sidewalks, all of those things. Individual exercise is encouraged and is allowed. But when you see groups of people that is not within the governor's executive order, unless they're all spaced out six feet and there are no more than ten of them. So um, those are the things that we'll be watching for as we um, try to assist in executing and enforcing this governor's order. Uh, essential activities. Individuals may leave their residences only to perform the following essential activities. To engage in activities to perform tasks necessary to their health and safety 
or the health and safety of their family or household members, including pets. I've had a question about going to the vet or health and safety of those persons who are unable or should not leave their home. Another one is to obtain necessary food, services, or supplies for themselves and members of their household needed to maintain the safety, sanitation, and essential operation of the home or residence, or to deliver those services or goods to those people who are unable or should not leave their home. To engage in individual outdoor activity and recreation. Again, that's on an individual basis. To perform work providing essential products and services at essential businesses or operations, again defined in that Executive Order 1463, or to carry out activities permitted in this Executive Order, including minimum operations. Essential travel. Essential travel includes travel for essential business or operation as defined in 1463 as, as supplemented. Travel for essential activities as defined in this 1466, which is travel to care for elderly, minors, dependents, persons with disabilities, or other vulnerable persons, including to obtain COVID-19 testing for such individuals. Travel to or from educational institutions, including public and private, K-12 schools, colleges and universities, and other educational institutions for purposes of receiving materials for distance learning, for receiving meals, and other education-related purposes. Travel to or from a place of residence and travel required by law enforcement or court order, including to transport children pursuant to a custody agreement. So nothing in this executive order shall limit or alter the authority of any local or county authority from adopting orders, rules, regulations, resolutions, or actions that are more strict than established herein, provided that they do not impose restrictions that prevent any essential business or operation as identified in the 1463 order from a, their level necessary to provide essential services and functions during this state of emergency. And that pretty much covers the, the details, I think, of all the things that uh, are critical and that are impacted by the governor's 1466 order that came out um, on April the 1st. So Chris, did I miss anything? No, ma'am. Okay, all right, so having said that, I want to make sure that our board members have an opportunity to speak to that before we get to the agenda. So, uh, Alderman Carver, do you have anything you would like to add to um, the, the discussion on the governor's executive order and the city's response? Alderman Carver? Okay, I'm going to take, I'm going to take that as a no at this point. Alderman Sistrunk, do you have anything you'd like to add to the governor's executive order or a discussion of the city's response? Alderman Sistrunk? Has everybody left me? Am I here by myself now? <laughs> All right. Alderman Little, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Is there anything you'd like to add to the, to the city about the city's response and what's going on as it relates to the governor's executive order? Well, first, I'd like to say uh, thanks for reading that for everyone. It seemed like it would have been easier to um, list the ones that were considered non-essential as the essential. Um, it didn't leave many people out of, it, out of it, in my opinion. But uh, I'm just wondering, I'm, I'm seeing mixed things come across. I looked at the governor's Facebook page, and I texted you a shot of it a moment ago, um, where in the last hour, uh, somebody questioned about getting out and about. And I believe um, the city attorney had uh, conveyed recently that he felt like in interpreting the re most recent uh, executive order that it is basically a 24-7 purview, in essence, um, based on its language, unless you were attending to one of those essential functions. But he mentioned in that most recent um, uh, note on the Facebook page that People are free to go for a drive, and that, I, that tells me a random drive, which contradicts, I think, the spirit of the executive order, and it just seems like it's going to pose a um, law enforcement nightmare, and and yesterday I read an article where he was still deferring to the uh, local municipality if they wanted to pass a curfew, and in light of that, I'm wondering if it's something we might need to consider for Tuesday evening. Okay. Um, well, that that is something we can certainly we can certainly consider. Um, I think, I know that he said that you could go fishing if you kept the, the social distance. 
Um, and I think probably one of the things that we have to make sure that we do is have a, a good um, common sense approach to this. Um, Chris, Mr. Latimer, do you want to weigh in on the additional information that we're getting uh, from the governor? I have not seen that additional um, um, order saying that. I did see where he said go fishing, but I didn't see about going for a drive. I, I know he is about the second or third paragraph. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, you're, you're, I know he has said some things in his press conferences, and he's put some things out on Facebook and, and frequently asked questions that seem at times to contradict some of the text of the orders. Uh, but I think the text of the orders is the, is the thing that we have to go by right now. And in thinking about a curfew, um, certainly the board, that's something the board can do. But I, I, my personal thought would be the curfew would be something that is lesser than what is already in place with this last executive order, 1466. In fact, what it might do is give Starkville citizens a thought that they can travel during non-curfew hours. In other words, if Starkville instituted a curfew from, say, 10 p.m. to 5 a.m., the thought might be for some, well, I can travel anywhere I want to after 5 a.m., when that would violate this executive order, 1466. So it, it may confuse the issue more than it helps, but it's certainly something the board could, could consider. Okay, thank you, thank you, Mr. Latimer. And let me say real quickly that apparently we're having a little technical dif difficulty. Apparently Alderman Carver and Alderman Sistrunk were both attempting to speak and their microphone is off. So we're working, I hope we're working through some technical difficulties with that. So um, uh, Alderman Little, you had the floor. Do you, is there something else that you'd like to, to say about that? Oh, uh, no, I'm done with that. It just, it just seems like it uh, leaves room for ambiguity there, and um, it goes back to personal responsibility. We're going to have to do this for a couple of weeks, and I anticipate even possibly further. I don't know that, but it just stands to reason that's the direction we're heading. And uh, to put this behind us, people are just going to have to hunker down and, and think before they get in their cars and get out. Uh, is this something that's essential to me uh, getting through up through the rest of the day? Absolutely. And, you, Mayor. and thank you for that. Um, all right, I'm going to circle back to Alderman, Alderman Carver because he. I heard Alderman Sistro. Okay. Well, let me circle Thanks. back to Alderman Carver since I was going to do this. Alderman Carver, are you up now? Do you have Do you have a uh, uh, mic? Alderman Carver. All right. Still, still waiting to get that fixed. Alderman Sistro, are you up? I, I am, and I have some some really basic comments. I, I'd like to say that I appreciate the governor. Um, imposing some consistency across the state about how we were going to approach this with his executive order. But, but how successful we are, as Alderman Little was saying, rises and falls with how well we as individuals adhere to it. And so if, if you have any questions at all, my, my guess is you probably should be staying at home. But as you said, ask yourself before you go out, am I doing this for an essential purpose? And then can I do this and meet that rule of 10 and, and, and social distancing? Um, and it's incumbent upon each of us. We're, we're not going to be any more successful than, as, a, as a community than we are as, as individuals. So I encourage everybody, um, if you don't have to, don't. Um, I, I would say that for me, as we've been going through this now for a couple of weeks, um, I, I think there are two components to this. There's the people public safety piece of it, which we have been addressing. And I know that in a little bit, you're going to get to the part that's going to impact our businesses and, and impact our city as well, which is the financial part. If our businesses are not able to do business, we're not able to um, collect sales tax. And that's going to change how we um, handle some of our operations. Um, and that's also going to ultimately impact our employees in some way. So I, I want everybody to know that we are all very mindful of, of the impact of all of this to our community, and we need their help to make sure that that impact is as limited as possible by, by complying and trying to help us um, flatten the curve, reduce the, um, the, the exposure throughout our community, that sort of thing. It, it's, it's an extraordinary time we're in, and I, I know that we're going to survive it. I don't know how long it's going to be, but I do know we're going to survive it and, and, and come through on the other side somehow or another. So, thank you. Yes, I yield the floor. All right. Thank you. Alderman Walker. 
I have no comment. I yield the floor. Okay. All right. Alderman Beatty? Yes. Uh, on the uh, governor's decree, the uh, state, uh, state place order, one thing needs to be noted that all non-essential businesses are to stop all activities other than those necessary for minimum operation, uh, e.g. payroll, uh, health insurance security, and enabling employees to work from home. So that appears to mean that a person can go down to their business and lock the door, go in, lock, lock the door back, go back to their office, making like, payroll checks for the employees. That kind of, I think that's essential and need to make that point. Um, um, that's how you for. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we do have people still have to pay their bills, pay, pay their employees. And so that is one of the things that's considered essential is to be able to do that and, and let your business uh, meet its obligations. So that's absolutely correct. All right. Well, if there is nothing else as it relates to that, then we will move on into the agenda. Um, and what we will do is look at where, where we can, um, items that we can put on consent so that um, as we go to our meeting on Tuesday night, we'll be meeting down in the courtroom, but it'll be the same format. Uh, we are making arrangements for everyone to be able to be uh, up on the screen, and hopefully we'll have a split screen so that we will, we'll be able to see the agenda and the items that are, uh, that are going to be considered by the board at the time. So right now we will go to um, the minutes. We have one, two, we have five sets of minutes. Mr. Latimer, you have looked at those. Ms. Harden has, has passed the test on that. Yes, ma'am. I think those amendments have been made and they're ready to go. Okay. And unless I hear uh, an, an objection, those would be things we would normally put on a consent agenda. So um, if, if there is an objection, uh, please go ahead and speak up. But if not, we'll put those on consent. Um, I know of no comments. We have no introductions that I'm aware of. Uh, I feel sure that by the time Tuesday rolls around, there will probably be some comments that would be appropriate given that we have such a changing landscape to the things that we're dealing with uh, on a daily basis. It, it was hour by hour for a while, and, and now it's gotten to be slightly more on a daily basis. But uh, I anticipate we'll probably have some comments at that point in time. Citizens' comments will probably be minimal. Um, Mr. Turner will most likely join us, as he usually does. But we will again be keeping our audience to a six-foot spacing and less than 10 in that room. So um, please be advised if you have business before the uh, board on that evening, uh, it would be appropriate to be there. But other than that, it would be appropriate for you to stay home. And you may always view us on Facebook as we uh, live stream our, our broadcasts, or live stream our board meetings. We have no public appearances scheduled. We do have two public hearings that are set up. And those will obviously be things that will allow for the opportunity for the public to speak. But they will be. Um, Again, if it ends up being a number of people, we will adhere to the rule of 10 in that, but people will be able to come in and go out in order to, to allow us to meet that, but still have an opportunity for public, public uh, input. It is a, one of them is a request for a variance on a rear set, setback at 104 McKinley Street in a uh, TNE zoning district. Um, and that's something that will, the, that information, because we could not put that on consent anyway, because we've got to have a public hearing, then that's something that would not be considered for that. Um, we, our other, second public hearing is from Lee Carson, which is a special exception to allow for an accessory dwelling structure. And all those things we will have, uh, I think we've got some um, additional paperwork associated with uh, comments that have been made that were made as it relates to either one or both of these particular public hearing and considerations requests. Is it, does anyone have any question uh, as it regards either one of these items that they would like um, Dr. Kim to clear up before we get into that? And I will start. Uh, Alderman Carver, do you have anything you'd like to add to that? Have you had, to, have, do you have a mic yet? Alderman Carver? Not yet. Okay. Alderman Sistrunk, anything from you? Nothing to add. Okay. Alderman Little? Nothing. Okay. Alderman Walker? Nothing to add. Okay. Uh, Alderman Beatty? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Then in that case, those two, those two will be uh, on the agenda and will require us to take action on those uh, and have a public hearing. Under uh, Mayor's Business, I have put in a pandemic update, which again probably can address that under Mayor's comments. 
but I've also uh, put, on, put in under Mayor's Business a request for consideration of additional measures. And I have three of them here that um, what I will do at the request of Vice Mayor Perkins is to have those uh, individually listed out because what I am suggesting as a first step to try to address um, what is obviously going to be a revenue shortfall for us. I'm hearing something, a little feedback. On it. I'm hearing myself is what I'm hearing. Matt, is that something we can deal with? Okay. Um, they are about the wrong button, I think. So uh, okay. I'm back. Oh, should be. Okay, thank you. Uh, and what, here's what I'm asking the board to consider as a part of our response to the difficulties that we are going to be facing as it relates to revenue. Uh, one is to um, have a temporary 60-day suspension of the employee pay raises that were approved for an April time frame uh, back in September of 2019. And I'm asking to suspend them at least until the pay period ending date of June the 18th of 2020, which would be the pay period. And this will allow us to hopefully have some input from what we're going to be seeing as it relates to our sales tax revenue. And the, I think the main numbers on, on our sales tax will be in and reflective of what we're at least somewhat experiencing now as we've gone into this uh, shelter in place and also our, our closing of the restaurants and uh, the businesses closing based on, on the um, nationwide issues. The second item I'm asking for is to impose a temporary 60-day hiring freeze on the city. The two exceptions to that I'm asking for is the director of parks and recreation and a water treatment operator. And the reason for both of those is, in particular, the director of Parks and Rec, we have currently someone who has been very generous in offering to uh, supplement our loss of Mr. Logan recently. But our department has mostly new personnel there who are, um, I think, need to have someone who can plan on going forward with us on a long-term basis. And so um, I would like to, for that to be one of them. The other is a water treatment operator. We have only one water treatment operator. And we absolutely, if, if for some reason we lost um, our current water treatment operator to any uh, COVID-19 issues um, or illness of any other kind, we would be without someone. And that is an a, a, a essential and critical position that needs to be filled. So those are the two exceptions to my um, asking the board to consider a temporary hiring freeze. And third um, is the suspension of all travel and equipment purchases for the next 60 days. Again, with the exception of purchases that are uh, part of an ongoing project such as our Southwest uh, power substation and our wastewater treatment plant construction. And those things would all be uh, reconsidered by the board on June the 2nd. That would be our June the 2nd meeting. So um, I would like to pose those things to the board. I will break them out as individual uh, proposition so that the board can vote on them uh, separately but that's what I'm bringing to the board and I will I will tell you now that there is um, absolutely no doubt that we're going to have a severe drop in our sales tax revenue uh, how severe we don't know yet and part of our part of what we control is not our revenue but our costs and so this is a first step as far as I'm concerned our next board meeting will be April the 21st and at that it may be time for us to look at something as significant as going to a 32-hour week for example for our employees those are things that we're going to need to look at those are some hard decisions that we're going to have to be making and so uh, we will be researching those and what that means for everyone between now and then but for now that is my recommendation to the board and again I will break that out in three different uh, three different agenda items so that they can be voted on separately. So having said that, I will start with Alderman Carver. Do you have video, uh, audio yet, Alderman Carver? Still not. I am so sorry. Okay. Alderman, Mayor. Yes. Hey, Mayor. This is Bill. Uh, Alderman Carver contacted me. He was on his cell phone, I think, in a, in a remote location. He was getting some, he was having some reception issues. So he dropped off the call. Okay, thank you so much for letting me know that. That keeps me from, I keep asking him. <laughs> All right, Alderman, Alderman Sistrunk, do you, would you like to weigh in on any of that? I, I would. Um, I think that the city clerk and I will have a, a handout at the table um, Monday, uh, Tuesday night, not, not um, outlining anything specific, but just some informational 
um, items for uh, the aldermen to have so that they can be getting their heads around what they're what they're willing to um, look at in terms of adjustments. The other thing that, that the acting at the 21st, as you're suggesting, is that hopefully by then we will know what um, relief will be made available to small municipalities um, through the CARES Act Part 4, <laughs> whatever it's going to be called. Um, we, we, at this point, um, do not have anything that's specifically directed to small municipalities. Um, all relief dollars that are coming to the state are coming to um, the governor and any cities over half a million, and we don't have any of these. So the million and a half that's um, earmarked from this million and a half, I'm sorry, one and a half billion dollars that are earmarked for, for Mississippi um, are, are at, the, at the governor's discretion to sort out how he's going to, to use that. But by the 21st, hopefully we'll have a better feel of um, if there are going to be relief measures out there beyond the things that we can control right now, like you said, cost measures. And I yield the floor. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Um, Alderman Little, anything you'd like to add to that or any thoughts to go with that? Alderman Little, are you still there? Okay. Uh, Alderman Walker, anything you'd like to add to any of that? No, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Beatty, anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, thank you, Mayor. Okay. All right, thank you. Well, that will be something that will be up for consideration, and we will, again, be modifying the budget to reflect an, a separate agenda item to go with each one of those. So that will be something that will be available to you. And, and though, let me ask this question of uh, um, Ms. Harden while she's here. Uh, Alderman Sistrunk said at the table. That's, that would be a, a euphemism, I would assume, but we're going to email it out. We will. Will that be Monday, Tuesday? Do we know? Uh, I'm going to have to get with the Alderman Sistrunk this afternoon and see where all she wants to include. Okay. All right. Well, then we will have an expectation of having that in, e in an email format prior probably, to the board meeting. It'll be probably sometime Monday. Okay. All right. That'll be great. All right. The next item is consideration of the submittal of a budget modification. This is a housekeeping item and would normally be considered something that we would put on consent. So if somebody has any objection to it, I'm going to let y'all speak right up and tell me. Other than that, I think it probably is worthy of a consent item. So I'm going to show consent by that. Um, and also the following one is the continuation of, a pro of our proclamation of an existence of a local emergency. It expires prior to our next, uh, our second meeting in April. And so we need to go ahead and make that uh, a continuation of that proclamation before it expires. So I would assume that one also would serve as a good consent item. If someone has anything, uh, speak, speak up now and, and we'll, uh, we'll acknowledge that and remove it. But as it stands right now, we'll do that. Uh, consideration of a continued administrative leave with pay for the city staff, that will be something that will obviously be up, be up for discussion. Um, and it will not, it clearly would not be something we would put on consent, but I, I think that um, that is going to be one of those hard things right now. I don't think we're at a point where we're ready to pull that. That's my, that is my recommendation to the board. But obviously, if someone has, a, has another uh, thought, please share it. As it stands right now, we would revisit that. It will show up again. Depending on what the board does Tuesday night, we will have it show up again on the board meeting of the 21st. So um, I, will, I will ask now if there's anyone who wants to discuss that. Alderman Sistrunk, do you want to make a comment about that? Not, not at this time. Okay. Alderman Little? Not? Okay. Alderman Walker? No, ma'am. Okay. Alderman Beatty? They are not at this time. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, the, the next one is in a consideration to appoint Reverend Ronnie Tucker to fill a vacancy on the library board. This, too, is one of those things. He was our only applicant, and this is one of those things that also normally goes on consent. So I'm going to show that as consent unless, um, unless we hear otherwise from someone um, on the telephone. Uh, under airport, this is leasing of tillable land. Mr. Latimer, is that, uh, has that passed the muster for you? Yes, ma'am. We've uh, negotiated that and it's in final form. Okay. All right. And that too normally is one of the things that would go on consent. So with that being said, I'm going to place that on consent. And if someone wishes to say otherwise, I, I will look for a text or listen for um, uh, a different end. Special event request is for Starkville Area Arts Council. 
Uh, these, are ne these are not normally consent items and we won't do it, but I do want to say that what they're wanting to do is get approval. They do not have a date yet because obviously they cannot uh, plan as it stands right now. April is, is here and we're not going to be in a position where they can have an event. But they are looking at September and would like to just get prior approval and when they come back with a date and with the insurance, obviously we can consider approving it with with the, a finalized date and with the, that insurance in place as we usually do. Um, so that is that is what they're asking. Any issues with that, Mr. Latimer, based on uh, those two caveats to go with that item? No, ma'am, I wonder, the only thought I have is I wonder, could they give us a date range? September. Uh, just to... September is Okay. Well. Okay. Maybe make that a part of the motion or a part of the agenda item in case it's a consent item. Okay. All right. Just to give it some reasonable certainty. Okay, thank you. All right, the next item we have is a claims docket, which also does not go on consent, so we will, that is our normal uh, agenda item. Uh, the next item under that is a commercial burn permit for Kim Moreland. I know that uh, the chief has looked at that. Chief, I believe you're on the line with us, is that correct? Chief Yarborough? Okay, lost him. I saw yes, ma'am, I'm here. You are there? Okay. Any issues with that commercial burn permit? No, ma'am. We're going to move the, we're gonna not going to let them burn until after May, just because so many people are at home right now. So just depending on May 4th would be the earliest they'll be able to burn. Okay. All right. So that was, uh, um, are, are they going to come back with that request again, or are you suggesting that we go ahead and approve it with, with that date that you will then contact them about? You can go ahead and approve it if, if the board would like, and then that way we don't have to issue it until May 4th. Okay. We can, when we issue the burn pen, we can issue it on May 4th. Okay. All right. That is also something we would usually uh, allow to be on consent. So unless I hear otherwise, is that acceptable to the board? I will place that on consent. Uh, under parks, this Mayor. Is, I'm sorry. Yes, Mr. Beatty. This, this is burning the material, building materials from a deconstruction of, a, of an old, uh, dwelling or apartment building, what, what, what type of burn it is? Uh, Chief, uh, let me get back with Chief. Someone Yarbrough. muted you. Press star six to unmute. Chief yeah, it, it's a uh, type of burn. It's, it's burning off a uh, construction site, uh, be trees and things like that. It's a clearing from... So this will be stumps and that kind of stuff. It won't be, there's no, we're not piling up anything to be considered to be ha potentially hazardous material or anything like that, burning it. I oh, no, sure sir, no, sir. Okay, thank you. All right, does that, is that uh, cleared up for you, Alderman Beatty, to the extent that you're willing to let it go on consent, or do you want it off? No, I think it's fine for consent, Mayor. Thank you. All right, thank you. Second item, or the next item is under parks. It's a memorandum of understanding. Uh, Mr. Latimer, that too is, has met with your approval? It has, but it was approved before all these executive orders. I think we need to make sure what the date range on the MOU is and see when that goes into effect because I believe that service is provided at the parks, right? It is provided at the parks, but it is part of a feeding program, which is also under an essential service for the, for the governor's order. But yeah, I, and then, but I'm worried about the, you know, with the parks being closed, though, I guess you'd make an exception for that feeding program? Yes, and they work, they work out of the Outlaw Center in that kitchen there, and so okay. um, I think it could be, but well, I'll tell you what, we'll leave it off consent and we'll take a look at the details. Sounds good. All right, thank you. Um, the police department has consideration of approval of an agreement for uh, acquisition of a fingerprint machine kiosk. Uh, that would normally go under a consent agenda item, so unless there's a, a disagreement from the board, we'll place that one on consent. Ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Alderman Sister Unk. I, I believe that's being paid for under a grant and so uh, would be a piece of equipment that we would approve um, even if we suspend um, other equipment purchases. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. That is correct. All right. Thank you very much. So that one is still uh, good for consent. And moving to utilities department, we just have three items to go. And these are all bids and these are associated with uh, necessary repairs. The first one is a, a lowest and best quote for a re, uh, repair to a motor at number seven well pump on the blue, at the Bluefield location. That uh, would normally go under a consent item, so I'm gonna place a C there unless I hear from anyone. 
Uh, the other two items, well, let's take them one at a time. Lowest and best bid for engineering laboratories. Again, these are for the Southwest Startville substation, which I referenced earlier as a project that is ongoing that the bonds have already been uh, uh, put out there for and the money is, money is ready to be spent and it is a critical infrastructure item. So that would normally be a consent item and I'm going to put a C by that one as well unless I hear from someone. And last but not least, we have the, again, um, substation battery system for the Southwest Startle substation. This too is a critical infrastructure item and the, the money is in place for this via the bonds. So that would also normally be a consent item. All right, having said that, that takes us to the end of the agenda. And I will cycle back through one more time for anyone who wishes to uh, add to any of this discussion. And if there's anything that uh, we need to take up, Please let me know now. I know Alderman Carver is no longer there. Alderman Sistrunk, anything from you? Nothing, thank you. Thank right. you for arranging this. Yes, ma'am. I'm delighted that we have the capability, and I want to give highest compliments to our IT department while I'm doing that. They, Who knew how essential they absolutely were to us? And so, um, <laughs> yes, thank you very much for, for saying that and, and calling out our IT folks. Uh, Alderman Little, are you still there? I am here, Mayor. Uh, Couple of this internet back home. Um, now, is this how we're going to be choosing that? Am I correct? I'm sorry, say that again. I, didn't, I didn't understand it. Yes, sir. That is the same format. And if you're having problems, let's make sure that we get Joel or someone with you to help you out with uh, uh, any audio issues. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna let them get with you because we're we've got you frozen right now, so obviously we're having a little difficulty. So I'll let them I'll let them uh, get with you on that. To see, make sure we've got good um, communications on Tuesday night. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Alderman Walker. Nothing at this time, Mayor. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Alderman Beatty. Mayor, I want to commend Joel and the um, IT department for the really good job of getting us all together for this meeting and also for the good job you've done in, in handling the meeting in a, a, a different circumstance, but uh, thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's maybe a little bit awkward, but I think it's something we can get used to and not because we want to, but because we have to. So I appreciate everyone. And that being said, with nothing else, let me remind everyone one more time about our hotline. Uh, there are people out there in the community who want to help. Our phone number that we're using is 662-323-4813. It is being manned from 9 to 4, Monday through Friday. So if you have some needs that we can hopefully fulfill, uh, we have people in the community who are standing by wanting to be of assistance to anyone who needs it. So you may continue to call the city. We're trying to answer the phones um, on our regular line. I've fielded calls myself. And so we will try to be a source and a resource for you as we work our way through this time. Um, and we're gonna make it, guys. We're gonna make it. It'll be it'll be fine. It's just gonna be a little painful for a while, but we're gonna do this. So let's stay home, be safe, have a great weekend, enjoy your family, and uh, we will see everyone on Tuesday night at 5:30 via this same medium. So we will adjourn this meeting. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor.